Welcome back to another episode of Unranked Podcast. <clears throat> Coming to you all with the um, usual lineup, but uh, this one's special. We all know why this one is so much more special. Um, it's had the game go down this past um, weekend, and once again, um, the Block M came out victorious for the third year in a row. Um, just a great victory all around. Instant classic, probably one of the better games I've watched in this rivalry in the last 10 to 15 years overall. Um, I'm going to kick it over to you, E, just kind of see your thoughts on um, how the game went down and yeah, just what you thought about the game on Saturday. Yeah, no, I mean, I thought the team stepped up um, just all facets. It wasn't, you know, uh, we knew it wasn't going to be easy, uh, even though it was at home, even though, uh, you know, they're not as uh, heavily loaded as they typically are. So we we knew all that considered it was still not going to be an easy game. And, uh, you know, they showed that. I mean, I think we, we exchanged uh, punts for probably the first seven, eight minutes of the game. Just, you know, uh, move, e each of us – they three and out, we moved the ball a little bit, punted back and forth, back and forth, just filling each other out. Um, and then, you know, we, we strike first, and it was um, it was pretty much on from there. So I, I think, you know, we we played a, a good game. Um, you know, not not overly sexy. We just we did what we had to do. We gritted it out. Um, and, and, and multiple players made plays when it had to happen. Uh, uh, Sharon Moore, uh, interim coach, stepped up to the plate. Dude. Had the right cadence of the game. Had the right cadence of the game. Went for it on forefront. I thought he should. Um, punted when I thought he should. Uh, you know, just kind of the the interchanging of the running backs. You know, all the, I, I just thought overall I liked our game plan. Um, and and you know we came to play and and we we held arguably the best player in the country, top three, top five pick. If he decides to come out, he's acting like he won. I'm pretty sure he will. But Marvin Harrison, we we held him to uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. That is, to um, he didn't go off, but he still had a good game. So you know, I, I think that just that's a testament to our team. I think he had seven catches, one twenty, and a touchdown, uh, something along those lines. And um, and we we roll with the punches. Uh, will Johnson stepped up to the plate, followed him around sideline to sideline, position to position, uh, regardless of where he was lining up at. And and just came to play. Had a big time interception. Got the ball caught on a couple times. It's going to happen, but that's a that's a future NFL matchup that we'll be seeing for the next ten years because uh, both of those guys are our future NFL guys, and I think we'll both be studs to to very good players in the league. So overall, just you know, I tip our hat to the team. Great bow tie uh, to the end of the season. Twelve and zero, yeah, twelve and zero. Uh, trying to march towards thirteen. And just a good cap to the end of the season. Always a good time when we beat Ohio State, you know. Um, but even better when we beat Ohio State, heading to the Big Ten Championship for the third time in a row. So. Like, I mean, I can name Colson Lovely. He's out there, nose bleeding. He's spitting up blood. You know, he, he's still coming in the game, catching 10, 15 yard passes, you know, right on time, you know, to help extend drives. And he's just kind of turning, slowly turning into JJ's security blanket. Um, you know, AJ Burner, you know, coming out, making a key, a key uh, play, getting a 15 yard, you know, gain um, to get us, you know, more down the field to put us in scoring position right when Zach Zinner got hurt. From a defensive side of things, man, uh, Quentin Johnston. Um, guy, you know, he almost had an interception against Penn State, laid somebody out 20, 30 yards downfield in a very critical play. I mean, this is a backup. And, it, and I think, and I've, I've talked all year about the depth, and it just really, really showed on, on Saturday. I mean, that's secondary. Um, I, I watched Marvin Harrison Jr.'s interview after the game, and he said that they were giving him coverages that, like, he'd never even seen before. So hats off to Jesse Minner, um, you know, NFL background, you know, of course, just able to put together a great game plan for the defense. Um, Roman Wilson making timely plays. Cornelius Johnson making timely plays. You know, JJ, we sat on here and talked about how important it was for him to play a clean game and play complimentary football. He made some some great throws. He made one throw across his body that I think had every, every Michigan fan in the nation <laughs> had their hearts yes. stopped um, trying to see where that ball was going to end up at. But um, I know I said that I think that it was going to be just really like a – I've always had a feeling it might have been a Blake Corum game, right? He still had a great game, 80, you know, 80, 90 yards, a couple of tuds. But, you know, I, I was thinking it was going to be one of those, like, you know, 120, 130, and maybe just kind of ride him to the, you know, to the finish line. But I just love how we were able to essentially get the job done, not play our best game of football, 
Um, and there's still a lot, a lot of meat left on the bone you know, from here on out as well. So just a great, yeah. great victory. One hundred percent. I mean, just to just to mention the defense again. Um, I, I think they obviously had their hands full. Um, yeah. And but I, I think we, it looked like one of those games where even let's say they had a CJ Stroud still at quarterback or somebody along those lines comparable. I think we would have been firing on all cylinders as well. I think our our defense mm-hmm. looked like they were going to play. Marvin Harrison still had a good game. Um, we the running backs made plays on us from time to time. We just cut the water off when needed. Yep. And made stops when needed. Um, those intercept that interception early to get us into the end zone. I think that interception led to Blake's uh fourth down that they tried to take from us. They tried to take they just go uh, get it twice. You know, had to go get it twice. Yeah. Uh they tried to take uh JJ's pass to Roman Wilson from us. Um, you know, Joe Clapp was, you know, I'm not gonna say especially to him, but he was getting he was getting a little worked up, I should say, about uh how the potential of that. Kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was getting <laughs> a little hot about it but um i overall i just um uh, we weathered a storm um and and their coach was throwing a temper tantrum on the sideline and i think that that um i said this before we hopped on but i do think there's a difference between like a, a nick saban or somebody like that uh harbaugh sometimes when he is getting into a, a referee's ass it you know he, he's chewing them, chewing them out from like a, a, a alpha point of view Versus it no. almost looking like he was whining and complaining and just generally looked flustered in the game and looked sick walking through that tunnel. Um, One of the, I want to, I just want to say this real quick. I saw a clip where they had him from like the uh, press box view and he's literally tearing into the ref. You just see Kyle McCord and just like the running back just kind of sitting there behind him. It's like, what kind of message are you sending to your team? Like, yeah. And it was, I agree. And he just would not stop. Like, I mean, it was literally, yeah. you know. Coming back after commercial break and still doing it. So I think just yeah. just had his head out of the game. Just, just you know, I think uh, you can put a lot on his victory. They, they, Their claim to fame is they can beat us. And um, and we, we take that away from them. Their, their fan base doesn't know how to act. The players don't know how to necessarily do it. I think they they had kind of a, a swag about them that we're, that we're taking. And it's a, a changing of tide. Nobody in this last four year recruiting class had beat us. Um, yeah. And all four of ours has. That's a, a change of tie. Dude. So we, um, we've we taken their best punches when they have somebody like CJ Stroud who comes into the NFL hitting the ground running. And uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. now, I mean, they, they still have players out here. So it's not like we're going to get scrubs. And I think at the end of the day, I mean, we can give them their props now if we beat them. I think they're still, they're, they're a top four team in this, in, in the country. I, I, um, I don't want them to get back in. Don't tell me that, but I do think. Um, play so, twice. And, and, um, it that's that's a testament to how good we are as a squad. We finally yeah. got Harbaugh back. I will coming up in a couple of days here. Um, for it looks like now our our annual not a um, trip down to what Indianapolis Lucas Oil Stadium. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just I'm ready for it. You know, we're joking about hopping on a buying some tickets and driving down ourselves. Um, you know, I think. That that crowd's gonna be rocking for this upcoming up week, and just hungry for that 13th victory. And the team, um, you know, we got to regroup a little bit. I mean, I guess we should we should mention uh, Zach Zinner going down, and just the the blow to the team that is. And and obviously, we still gotta have a next man up mentality. I think even he would say that. Um, but I that's that's a demoralizing loss uh, to a guy that we've watched take, you know, came back for this 40, 40 something starts in his career. We've been watching him for, you know, the last four years of our Michigan fan career as well. So, you know, it's just tough to see that happen. Uh, but mm-hmm. I think all the team got to regroup, come back strong, um, and and go ahead and put the boot down in Iowa. So I'm looking forward to it, man. I mean, it's just, um, you know, it is always good good to beat Ohio State. And just uh, hopefully Same. earn a little bit of respect where, you know, you know, like they, they shouldn't have been over us this year, as far as far as I'm concerned, ranked higher than us. So not that that really matters at the end of the day, we beat them. But uh, maybe, you know, a, a little more respect can come our way where this time next year, if we're sitting there again, there's no reason for us not to be ranked higher than them. And um, and so that's kind of all we got to say about that. And I look forward to, you know, a blowout victory versus Iowa. <laughs> sure. So, yeah. No, this is, I mean, statement win. I remember saying we first beat them in 21. I think I told you a couple different times, like we can steal one at their crib, which we did. I'm, you know, I'm confident that we can get three 
because all the pressure, mm -hmm. like I said, you watch, you watch Randy on the sideline the entire game. All the pressure was on them. You know, it was really – everybody expected them to, you know, kind of stop the winning streak. Um, and we were able to, you know, get another uh, – get a third one in a row. And that's just going to swing the pendulum, right? Yeah, 80 recruits, four or five stars, you know, a lot of – a lot of uh, you know, we know Harbaugh is great at getting the three stars and develop them and turn them into, you know, four stars, five stars, his second, third year in the program. But now we won't really be able to get them – five-star guys that can come in and play right away, them four-star guys that can come in and play right away. So that win just did a lot. I feel immensely transfer portal. You know, we were pretty active in that last year. I expect us to kind of do the same thing from like a free agency standpoint, just taking what we need out of there. And um, yeah, it's just, it was a great, great victory. And I'm just looking forward to kind of seeing how the chips continue to fall as the season goes on and go ahead and flip the page to uh, Iowa. You know, we, we already kind of know what they're about. Um, played them a couple of years ago <clears throat> in the Big Ten Championship, played them last year on the road. We know what they're going to do. Um, they have probably the best defense. I think they have the seventh best defense in the country um, as of right now. Um, they're going to try to run the ball. They're going to try to get 10 yards. You know, they're going to try to get all the way to the 45, stall out on offense. They're going to bring out their All-American punter, and he's going to try to pin us within the five, you know, five, uh, 10, 10 yard line or five yard line. So, we, what we need to do is making sure we're taking care of that ball. We're not getting baited into tips and overthrows. We're not making mistakes. We're not shooting ourselves in the foot to somehow prolong this game. Because when you do that, that's when guys start to get hurt. Things along those lines. So I've said it every little, every single week um, this season up to this point. It's not the time to play with the food. Get in there. Got to be built to ass from the from the first kickoff. And I just want to be able to see us, you know. Much respect to Iowa, but I, I want to see us coast into a Big Ten championship in the third quarter. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you on that. And just looking at their their schedule this year, I mean, nothing jumps off the page with me. Just lose a bunch of dirty looking wins. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I you know, the only team they played worth talking about is Penn State and they got the brakes beat off of them, 31 nothing. Right. Uh, um obviously we know Penn State's a pretty legit team. But uh, we went in there and manhandled them. So if we manhandled Penn State, didn't have to pass the ball on them in the second half, and then Penn State 31 0 them, that gives me a little more confidence here. But I mean, looking at these sure. wins, uh, six point win versus, uh, or sorry, seven point win versus Iowa State, uh, 10, person win, 10 point win versus Michigan State, six point versus Purdue, uh, a loss to Minnesota. A three point win to Iowa. And I mean, they probably don't got 40 was, points behind in these. That wins. Wisconsin score is nasty 15 to yeah. six. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of the, I think it was 10 7, a lot of these scores nasty. Um, I think so. I, just in general, I, I'm feeling, I agree with you on that. Just going, get out. Um, I don't think they can compete with us offense as far as getting points up. So uh, it comes down to, you know, JJ, Blake, Donovan, receivers, taking care of the ball, you know, value that ball with your life. And, and, just inch your way down the field with those long drives, uh, wear that defense out. And, um, and I think whether I don't, I, I imagine they have a pretty formidable defense, but they also haven't seen an offense like us very often as well. Um, so I think going on there, get points when you get into the red zone, cause they won't be able to put points up and, um, and then just go play tough those defense. I think we, we looked at it before this, their leading receivers, Eric all you, you mentioned that I'm not going to your stat, but Eric all hasn't played since mid October. And uh, he's still their leading receiver. By leading 80 yards. <laughs> yeah. Leading quarterback has not even a thousand yards. He's in that sub 1,000 yards. Um, so I think, you know, they, there's a lot to work to for them to do on their end. And um, I imagine their players are probably shitting the bed um, in anticipation of having to come here and play us. Um, and this could be a very, very nasty blowout win. Um, but I, either way, I take, I take a little – Dust up, we get out. Um, everybody healthy with another Big Ten championship. But I think I'm thinking, go here, make a statement. When we'll probably could easily have the most convincing win of all of uh, uh what conference championship day. Um, I mean Georgia, Alabama have their hands full. Um, Oregon has their hands full. Or no, Texas. Texas. Uh, Texas. Friday. They yeah. So, um. We're going to play the easiest team that week, and I think we have to make make a, a note of that and, and go here and try to get a statement win. 
Um, because I think now you got to play strategically. You go ahead and let's say we can get a you know beat the hell out of them. I'm not gonna get my score up yet. Go ahead and beat the hell out of them. Um, Georgia mess around and lose or have a a tough outing versus Bama. Maybe you know skate by. I think you could you could see us moving up. Um, if you take care of business, and I, I think you got to try to play that game where you want to try to hope play Florida State and uh, stay away from some of these other teams because. Um, you know, we 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 probably got the role we wanted last year with uh, TCU. We just we just fumbled it as far as um, letting letting it go. And I didn't re- watch the highlights of that till this season started because I was so sick about that. But um, overall, I mean, we fired back. We played a crazy game and lost by six when we yeah. gave up a touchdown in in the first series. But trying to be too fancy, I won't see that happening again. Starting off this week with first Iowa, um, like you said, more Baltimore ass and just keep keep that momentum going that we have now is just domination offensively, defensively, and, and just play smothering football. That's, that's what we're about. We have an identity. And, yeah. Um, yeah. No, so I'm looking forward. To it. I just don't think they could, I don't think they can keep up with this mess with us. Um, yeah. It's almost unfair. They need to re I mean, obviously this last year of this, but um, I was on our side. There was six week team. You know, I was, I was sitting there, you know, getting ready to head to the, you know, uh, Music City Bowl or something. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they wouldn't be anywhere near the spotlight. And if you put Penn State on that side, they're coming out. You put, obviously, Ohio on that side, they're coming out. Um, Maryland, probably even coming out on that other side. We've we've been through the fire. This is just a, almost another easier hurdle to get through, to get to that chance, uh, to the real sure. price. So, yeah. And I think, you know, we get a fearless leader back. You know, Harbaugh gonna be at the helm, and I think that alone is just gonna. I mean, these kids, they ride for them. They love them to death. And I think that's just gonna motivate them. They already been playing motivated. You know, the last, you know, the, the last half of the season, just with everything's been going on, and I just feel like they're gonna want to show up and show out to make that yeah. uh, championship uh, trophy presentation even more awkward than it's already gonna be uh, when that time comes. So. No, Definitely. Harbaugh got to Harbaugh got to accept the championship with the buffs on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> get us that team sponsor. Get us the Michigan Cardigans. They coming, right? Uh, but no, I, I agree with you on this. Make it as awkward as possible. Just hand it, you know, go ahead and hand us that trophy, bitch. Um, yeah. And no, I agree. So, right, I'm worth it with you. Um, score prediction. Go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll go first. Um, I think it's gonna be a it gives a little trouble um, to kind of start the game off. And I think we're going to, I think we're just going to play complimentary football. I don't think we're going to be trying to show too much. I think we're just really, I think we are confident that we can beat them playing our game and not getting too flashy or anything crazy. So I, I can see, a, um, I'm going to say 31 to three. I think they get close enough to, you know, kick a 50 some yard field goal, get lucky. But I think after that, we should be able to pose our will um, early and often. Okay. Yeah. I'm in the same ballpark. Uh, I'm going 35 10. Uh, just, I, I don't, I'm looking here. I mean, every time they play, I mean, Penn state, I remember they had a top 10 defense and they got shut out. Yep. Um, you know, uh, Nebraska yeah, previous defense, they, they had 13 points. I mean, anytime they play somebody that's even remotely talking about, they barely score. Um, so I, I, I'm just, weapons. they got shut up yeah. with Kate and Eric all. So like, very true. Very true. Yeah, so yeah. now we out there with the backups. Like they they had our backups and they can't even get the job done. So um, <laughs> um they, you know, it's the hand me down school, they call me goodwill. But it's uh <laughs> cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm no, looking forward to it. But no, you know, somewhere in, anywhere in that ballpark, I'll be happy with it. You know, a little um 35 10, 31, 3, um, get in, get out, and um you know, and let's stop playing around. Let's go ahead and uh, just give Orgy the official backup, and so we can we can start when the backups come in, we can still keep some points on the board. For uh, sure, give me yeah, power. No, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I'm mean, hey, uh, no complaints on my end. You know, um, sitting there at number two in the country, um, where we need to be. Yeah, right where we need to be. Everything is still ours, even if even if Georgia goes to take care of business, everything can still be ours. One hundred percent. They're not being talked about that much. We've weathered the storm of all storms. So, um, you know, I think everything has been having I mean, Harbaugh hasn't coached half the damn season. So I think <laughs> everything, all that being said, I think we it, we've got to take that into account that we this is a, almost a new page, a new season. 
everything, all that other shit's behind us. And now we can go ahead and play, um, you know, playoff bowl type type of uh, football yeah. here. So, no, I agree. I understand. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and turn the page now. We did the Bears, excuse me, the Packers recap on Friday. So we'll dive in mm-hmm. uh, to the Saints now. And, um, yeah, so big game. We're going to be in New Orleans. Um it's one of those where you know you had a couple couple tough outings. You know, last time, you know, last time you saw the Lions, you know, they um dropped the ball on Thanksgiving. Um Bears gave them everything they wanted and more on um, the week prior. And now you're in, you know, now you're in uh kind of awkward territory, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, I watched the the Vikings play the Bears on Monday, and that was a shit show if I've ever seen one. I think the score, final score was 12-10. Literally watched Justin Fields fumble the fumble the game away and got an opportunity to win the game again. That's how bad it was. Um, and even add, I seen that, the combined the combined quarterback stats. I mean, it's a whole six turnovers. Oh my God, like it was, yeah, yeah nasty. It was like six turnovers. So you got, you know, you got, you know, you got a team in Chicago Bears that's starting to kind of get a little confidence. They can, you know, maybe ruin somebody's, you know, season. Um, we're starting to see what's kind of going on with the Vikings. You know, they're everybody was big on the pass show not, and uh, you know, now he's starting to people got film on them. Y'all starting to kind of show just like what what can kind of happen um to them. So well, yeah, I want to kick it over to you, E. Just want to see your thoughts on you know the Saints team and just what needs to be done to get a get another victory on the road. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think this was uh another. I mean, this is kind of a big one. Um, I think it's another one where you you don't want to go ahead and lose this one heading into the little stretch we're heading into. Um, uh, because I think we go on the road to the Bears after this. Um, mm-hmm. so I don't know what the game's December tenth. I just look December tenth and. Out there, it could be. I mean, who knows? So you don't want to yeah. go there and play play with that. Um, so I think you you got to go ahead and kind of kind of get the ship in line now before you heading yeah. up the, the, the rest of the storm here, um, the meat and potatoes of it. Because you got four uh, or three divisional games coming up um, it, after this. But just to focus on this week here, road game. Um, we I, I think one that we kind of need. I think one that we got to kind of get our identity back. Uh, we've been punched in the mouth. Defense looks confused, uh, just disappears at in large streaks of the game. Yeah, um, other teams seem to kind of do whatever they want to do, uh, and you know we, uh, you know, coach making boneheaded fourth downs again. I mean, you know, we're kind of going reverting back some old ways. So I really want to see us right the ship, and this is yep. a team you should definitely right the ship against. But it's also a team on the road that could come up and get you. I mean, yep. Alvin Kamara, no joke. Derek Carr's not having the greatest year, but he can. He obviously shows up with flashes, uh, still being pretty good. And I, I so I think with with what they have going on, um, and I think they're at five and six. They clearly want to get the back to five hundred heading into December. So um, you know, because I would, I don't know for sure, but I imagine beat us there in the playoff hunt uh, for a wild card or something. So you know, they're fighting for our lives, and and we we seem to have are having the time for our lives, and need to kind of realize that the shit's not over yet. So yep. uh, and. And so refocus. I think that's our top down. Um, uh, Campbell, uh, I almost had a Freudian slip here instead of Caldwell, but uh, Campbell um, just top down for him. So him kind of getting his his stuff back in order um, and, and and reflecting that down the, to the coordinators and down to the players. So I think um, this is a big one. I know uh, we're going to need Jack Campbell to step up because uh, uh, Anzalone. Alex Loney is is out, so I think you know uh, um, that get death by the by his potential matchup of Alvin Kamara out the backfield with Jack Campbell. I, I mean that you know, like you said, your time to shine, or you know, so make it or break it. Uh, we this is why we took the 19th pick on you is to go ahead and win this game here, something like that. You know, it's um, we so be the difference maker here. You know, go ahead and help us win this game here. Get a couple. Obviously, you're going to get the ball snagged on you every now and then, uh, but make that timely play. Uh, get them down, sure tackling when when uh, in open space when you are singled out, and and just another player we need Hutch. I know Hutch is doing everything he can, um, but we need you to kind of we need you to do more. We need you to step up. I mean, there's lots of players that if you're going to be great, you you overcome the double teams, you overcome the chips, you overcome them just singling you out and messing with you with the tight ends, your running backs, and all that. I mean, I think you have to find a way to just make plays despite all that. Um, mm-hmm. And I think this is a, this is a time where you've been adolescent um, idle for the last couple of weeks here. Uh, 
let's let's turn that motor back on a little bit and and then jumpstart that team because uh, it it could start with a player like you a play like you make a big time play, um, uh, uh, fumble, uh, recovery, a sack, fumble, something like that in that first quarter. That defense fires up the rest of that game. That offense mm-hmm. fires up the rest. Of the game. And um, so I, you know, that's that. Those are the type of things we're going to need to go ahead and get a victory here on the road. Um, I, I'm not not time to hit the panic button, but I think you lose this one. It with the rest of that schedule coming up, um, it could get a little dicey. Um, yeah. Yeah. You got to, yeah, yeah. No, I um, I think for me the biggest thing this week is gonna be that O line. Like I don't know what they was doing on Thanksgiving. Like I have never seen. I mean, that looked like a 2008 O line. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. We literally went from being the best O line in the league to just and a Sewell's on his ass. You know, golf fumbling the ball, getting sacked. You know, they're letting him. You know, they're letting the Packers hit him late. You know they. Like I told you on Friday, like we watch, I watched him get pulled down by his shoulder pad, knee get all turned up. And I'm like, I'm we sitting here watching, we're about to watch our season in in real time. Um, so I guarantee that Campbell, you know, he mo, you know, he he pushed them. Uh, I'm sure, you know, that defense is gonna be motivated to make some changes. One thing I I saw uh a stat on Twitter, I forgot to screenshot the uh the tweet, but it said that Aaron Glenn's been playing a lot more man coverage the last few weeks and a lot of last, a lot of courses we've played the last few weeks have been able to move around a little bit, you know, extend plays, run. Um, Derek Carr really have that in his tool bag, so I hope that we can maybe run a little more zone, maybe you know, give some of these DBs a little help, a little support, you know, in um, in pass coverage because they're, they're hurting right now. Like I think you know the the run uh, run defense is solid. The defense has been doing a good job of just like not getting like just scored on crazily the last couple of weeks. You know, they've been granted that Packers game minus know, the down, Chargers. Yeah. Minus the Chargers. But like for the most part, the last couple weeks, I feel like they've done a good job of holding. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's holding, holding best they can when the offense is kind of just sputtering, you know, yeah. throughout the game. So need the O line to step up. We need to establish that run early and often. Um and, and just need that <clears throat> need that defense to just Find it. I mean, it's you know, it's the same damn near the same people that had on their defense last year with some additions. So I'm a, you know, I'm hoping that it just took a little bit of soul searching over the little mini buy for them to realize that it's time to get this back back rolling. And you got to take, right. you got to get all these wins as they can. This is the NFL. These guys not laying down because their record's bad. I guarantee you the Saints are like, you know, chomping at the bit. They see us as a wounded animal right now. I guarantee yep. you they're thinking they can get us and get themselves back on track. If they've been having a pretty pretty crappy season themselves up to this point. So, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think you're right about the offensive line and I'm hoping, I mean, they've been very uh, consistent for us last two and a half, three years. So I'm hoping that was just a, an anomaly. Um, mm-hmm. sim, um, similar, to golf, similar to golf, you know, it was turnover, the turnover bug. I'm hoping that's out of his system. You know, we cannot afford that heading uh, down the stretch of this uh, season here. And um, so, no, I agree with you on that. It's just, we we gotta. I don't know. I think we. I don't know. It's a weird spot for Lions fans to be in because yes. you would have asked us, "Hey, heading into December, you guys would be eight and three. We all would have taken it. Uh, but now that we're in the middle of it, you get a little greedy. You get a little. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you also see you don't want the the season to get squandered away because we didn't. Um, because we didn't make a trade at a trade deadline. We don't want right. the season to get squandered away because, you know. Uh, you know, golf gets a turnover bug or the coach wants to start going for it on fourth down from his own 20 every game. There's little things that are avoidable. Um, yeah. I think we, um, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot for, I guess, lack of a better term. And I think that that's the frustrating thing that uh, that would be the same old Lions mantra. So I think you you go ahead and you get it corrected on the road, a tough role play. I mean, it's never easy to win down in New Orleans. Uh, mm-hmm. That crowd's rocking, whether they two and 13 or whether they 13 and two. Um, yep. they come they come to play. Uh so you know that you got that environment working against you, and um, and then you got 20 in snow on precipice on on a uh on the docket. So I think you know, um, like you said, coming off that mini buy, hopefully we're a little more rested, had a few more days of uh ice baths and get us ready and uh and, and come 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 to play again. But I'll be lying if I said that I'm not a little scared for the last with how already five weeks we got of the season. Sure. A little, yeah, a little, little, 
we we, we dropped this one. I think we got to bring the panic button out. We don't got to hit it, but we got to bring it out. Um, uh, you go ahead and get this one. We can put. You can keep it away for a while. But yeah. uh, you, you, you go ahead and look, drop this one. Eight and four. You got three division games on the in the Cowboys on the back burner. That's a, that's a tough stretch. You got those are those are must wins at that point. And I'm, and, and teams gonna be coming for you. Like even the Broncos, they were one and five. Now they're six and five. Like yep, teams will be coming. And and, I, and I'll say you know. We've been here before, right? Like last year, you know, we ratted off two, three, dropped a tough one to the Bills, came out, stole a couple, you know, got ran out out the stadium by the Panthers, came out and still finished strong. So it's not it's not unfamiliar territory. I think it's it's just unfamiliar for this season and how we came out. You know, we were probably one of the most like we were probably playing some of the, like the most perfect football essentially up until this point. And it happens, you know. So I think we just run into a little bit of turbulence. So I hope that they're able to take this time off to. Um, just get get back right, get back to where they need to be overall. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm so uh, here. So no, so you're lying about some of that. Best. I mean, coming out the gate with Kansas City, we just going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. We just going to- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Followed so, it up with uh, we had the Packers on Thursday night or something after. Oh, who was it? Was the Packers? Anyway, it was. We, we came out the gate. We came out the gate hot. Rolling, so, yeah. So, so yeah, still feel good. Um, start off with a little score prediction here. Um, I think we're going to end up, say it's going to be 20 to 17. I think, I think we're going to, it's a hard place to play on the road. They got a solid defense. Um, their offense is pretty, pretty pedestrian as of right now. Um, Derek Carr, you know, he's he's very familiar with the turnover bug. So I think we sneak out a sneak out a tough one on the road. Yeah, give me that score again. 20 to 17. Okay. Yeah, so we're pretty close. I had 24 20. Okay. Um, I think like you said, this is a, another tough one. I don't it had to be crazy for them to get hot on us as far as offensively goes. I think uh yeah. you know, minus Alvin Kamara getting busy on us. I just I can't imagine that happening. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as you know, Derek Carr has a twenty seventeen game in his pocket, you know. But um, that is kind of I, I agree with you on that, and just a, kind of a get right game. Um, and uh, to go ahead and down, win on a good uh, go win a good road road type environment. So no, yep. I yeah, so I'll the, take so either one of those. Just a, a good right game, got to get it right. Um, because after this, like I said, I'm I'll be panicking if we drop this. One. So sure. Um, Hundred percent, and I think, you know, we uh, like I said, last what five five weeks left. This one, Bears, Broncos, Vikings, Cowboys, Vikings, Vikings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said, that what looked like a month ago the easiest schedule of all time. I mean, Vikings, like you said, I mean, it could be hit or miss. Who's going to show up? Cowboys still pretty formidable. Yeah, all these teams still in playoff contention except for like yeah, the Bears. Yep. yeah, agreed. So I. Yeah, tough little stretch here, and uh, you need you need to keep stack piling. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I agree. Yeah, because we another good step closer, man. Another good week of football. Right. So, yeah. And uh, just want to throw this little nugget out there: we, we one week closer to a potential Lions Rams first round matchup. So, gotta stay on track, though. Gotta stay yeah. on track. But, um, yeah. Got anything else? No, that's all. We'll be back at you. Keep dropping the shorts and. Uh, We'll be back at you next Wednesday. All right. Talk soon. Peace.